Video game physics. They're meant to simulate what goes on in the real world when objects behave like objects. Celestial bodies generate gravity, and our much smaller bodies react to it, as well as generating a little ourselves, as well as some electromagnetic fields. Nothing very strong, of course. But why don't we do all of that in video games? And for that matter, how does it work? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, we ask the question, why are real-world physics equations not used in video games? There are few fields of science that have been as thoroughly researched as physics. Physics gives us an understanding of the properties of objects and materials, as well as the forces that manipulate them, and therefore impact our lives. As without some sort of physics going on, nothing that we do would ever happen. Physics is literally everything just happening. And with that, I'd like to bring up a video that we recently did where we talked about the building of the various assets we see in video games. None of them are made up of actual materials so much as shells that effectively in a lot of ways mimic the way children's toys are made. They have surface detail and images painted onto them that makes them resemble the thing that they're supposed to be, but an action figure isn't a tiny human, it's a solid piece of plastic painted to look like a tiny human. The same goes for polygonal representations of humanity that exist within a virtual space. If we were to simulate, and I mean without any bit of physics, if we were just to simulate the full makeup of a real object or organism down to a molecular level, it does not matter how good of a computer you have, how many graphics cards you have, or anything like that, because absolutely nothing could possibly do that right now, at least in real time. You could certainly simulate it, but there's no reason to expect that it would happen in real time. Molecules are utterly tiny and infinitely more complex than triangles. Everything that exists in a video game is an artistic representation rather than an accurate simulation. And while we can do some pretty cool stuff with particle effects, such as rendering water that looks quite a bit like water, or being able to step through the snow and leaving footprints kicking snow up, the same going for sand. We don't simulate those things on a molecular level, or even a cellular level, or a anything smaller than a particle level. Obviously, a particle of sand is made up of many atoms, molecules, and not necessarily made from the same materials as the next particle of sand. Now this is a pretty perfect example of why you don't run full-blown physics simulations. If you can approximate a good-looking, acceptable version of sand with a technique that is significantly less complicated and therefore runnable on today's hardware while other things are going on, then you would want that instead of attempting to run a molecular simulation. The world's gamers, especially the ones that play competitive online games, rely on the idea that their computers will be able to run the software. If our goal was to simulate everything one-to-one, -one, physically exactly how it acts, we would have to model everything in a totally different way. We couldn't model it the way we do now, because we are only making empty shells. And being the materials that game developers work with are not the same thing, you can't use the same equations. Now what you can do is make water into a particle system where the particles take up significantly more space than an actual H2O molecule. Now you still have to make these particles interact in a way that makes them all appear to be one simple solid, or rather fluid, but that can be done with shaders. So the physics equations that govern that type of thing are not utterly foreign to the types of physics equations that would result in an actual full simulation of water, but they are vastly simplified because while well, you're talking about less particles existing, and you're talking about them probably being much larger in size than a molecule. Now this is a small explanation for a much larger thing, but these are the technical reasons why the exact same equations aren't applied to physics in video games. There are also much more practical reasons, however, and I'll sum them up very simply. Do you think Sonic the Hedgehog would be fun if his physics were accurate? I'll answer that for you, no. The whole point is that the physics are not accurate, they're in fact tuned to be fun, and that's the magic of the game. If we're talking about physics, we also can't not bring up Dead or Alive, 
Let's just talk about beach volleyball for a second. Nothing in that game acts like the real version of that thing. I don't mean to get too lewd for you, and I don't want to ruin that game for anybody, but let's just say that's not an accurate physics simulation. And that's kind of why people play it. People want the inaccurate physics. They want things to behave like they do in that game. And it's like that really for every game, although certainly not in the same way or dressed as scantily. It just so happens that reproducing physics as accurately as possible is really kind of only good for games that are based around simulation aspects. And for a lot of people, simulations aren't as fun as their arcade counterparts. For instance, I much prefer the older NBA Jam games to any of the basketball games of today, and it's not because they're more realistic. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's because they're a lot less realistic. It's just more fun. And that's something I hope that people understand going forward. Physics don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be accurate. We don't have to worry about it. What we have to worry about is if we're enjoying ourselves. If we're going to be totally honest, there are technical reasons why we don't have totally accurate physics, and while we just legitimately don't need completely accurate physics in order to enjoy ourselves. In fact, if somebody programmed totally accurate physics in a manner that actually worked on today's platforms, I'd have to wonder why the hell we're even bothering with reality anymore anyway. That's basically what the Matrix is. I mean, for everybody who isn't unplugged from the Matrix, the people who are able to do whatever they want with the Matrix obviously have a little bit more fun, which backs up my point, does it not? What do you think? Would totally accurate physics make for better games? Or is that part of the art? Anyway, let's talk about it in the comments. If you like this video, please click like, and if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single weekday, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.